All right, guys, how's it going? East Bay Anglers here today. We're talking about the best smallmouth bass lakes in California. So if you're located on the West Coast, if you're located in California or one of the border states, this is going to really appeal to you. The best lakes in California when it comes to smallmouth fishing. So we're talking about size. We're talking about numbers. We're talking about quality and we're talking about quantity, both. So let's get straight to it. Number one on the list, and this is a smaller lake, but it produces big fish and can't say it enough. It's been one of those lakes that I've been lucky to fish more than a few times in the last six years. And it's incredible. Once you go there, the amount of four to six pound bass is pretty, pretty amazing considering the size of the fishery and the abundance of fish for them to get this big it's pretty good it's really uh there's a good you know food source in the partic in that lake uh the lake we're talking about is trinity lake it's uh in the eastern or kind of the more like the nor northern northeast so it's like norcal but a little bit on the eastern side of norcal it's got a you know pretty good elevation so you know in that 4,000 feet right around 4,000 feet in elevation Trinity Lake California has uh you know lots of four pound smallmouth so if you haven't caught a four pound smallmouth yet go there and you're probably going to have you know really good odds of picking one or more smallmouth up in those in that size in that class if you guys are looking for even bigger smallmouth, they do have smallmouth in there up to six pounds. To catch anything over six pounds there, as far as smallmouth or largemouth, is pretty rare. So if you're going there looking for bigger fish than that, it's not the place to go. But if you're going there looking for numbers of smallmouth and Lots of three, four pound smallmouth, the occasional five, the, the, you know, every once in a while you bust out a six. If you're looking for those fish, go to Trinity Lake, California. It's well worth the time, the money, the effort. Um, it's a great little fishery. It's beautiful. It's nestled in, you know, like I said, a little bit of high country. So you've got, you know, beautiful pine trees, some great scenery clear crystal clear water a lot of the year sometimes when you get those big storms coming in like right now we've got a big storm that just came through you're going to have stained water but a lot of the times that fishery is really clear keep that in mind when you go there and you're thinking about what to bring number two on the list is going to be scott's flat now if you guys haven't heard of it it's another small fishery not too far from the one we just got done talking about, maybe, I don't know, hour from that fishery. Once again, on the eastern side of California, more in NorCal, and it is once again in the mid high, mid, mid, mid elevation, you know, the, the 4,000 foot range. Um, some would consider it high elevation, but you know, great little lake when it comes to smallmouth you're going to get on numbers you're going to get on quality as far as you know your average day at scott's flat you could be looking at five smallmouth you could be looking at 15 smallmouth okay that's like an average day lots of people can go there and should be able to catch that you know um, that amount now if you're looking and you're like really good angler you could probably catch up to 2025 20, you're looking at a good day that would be a good day there 2025 20, smallmouth the the smallmouth there are going to range from real small relatively no weight all the way once you know you get to those bigger fish you got to cycle through a lot of fish but you can get five five pound smallmouth in that fishery they're not you know like i said every cast they're going to require you to cycle through a bunch of fish, but they're in there. A lot of threes, some fours, and a few fives roaming. 
So really good fishery to get on your numbers and to get on quality. I love the lake. Once again, very scenic, very, very quiet compared to a lot of lakes. You know, you got a lot of riprap, you got all this stuff going on. It's pretty quiet, relatively um, peaceful lake. And if you guys are going up there, keep in mind, it's another clear water fishery. That's something about smallmouth, at least in California and from you know everything I've heard from people fishing everywhere in North America, Canada, you know, United States doesn't seem to matter. They prefer clear water. So it's rare to find fisheries stacked to the gills that are poor water clarity loaded with smallmouth bass. And even if those bass are, those smallmouth are in the fishery, they still prefer the clearer water in that body of water. So keep that in mind. Okay, um, once again, you're going to be throwing the same types of things you're going to be throwing at Trinity at Scott's Flat. The next thing, the next lake I want to talk about is Lake Pardee. Once again, we're talking clear water. We're talking good visibility most of the year. Now this lake has smallmouth and northern strain largemouth. It's got an abundance of smallmouth, but it really depends on where you fish the lake. So we're gonna break down a little bit, um, you know, just where you want to focus. If you want to go to Lake Party and catch a lot of smallmouth, I've put in a lot of time there. So I can tell you that the smallmouth from the main lake all the way up the McCollumy. There's a lot more smallmouth in there. Uh, it seems like, you know, the north and the south end of the lake, they're gonna predominantly be largemouth. And then when you go on the main lake and you go east up the McCollumy, you're gonna find a lot more smallmouth bass in those in that particular area. And that lake is one of those places you can spend a lot of time trying to get smallmouth in the wrong place. So those smallmouth are going to range from, you know, really small all the way to the state record. The state record right now is at Lake Pardee. So that's by Harold Hardin and that's a 10 pound, eight ounce smallmouth. It's, it's a really big fish. It's really impressive. Now, as far as that fishery right now, it's gonna to be tough to beat his smallmouth bass. And one of the reasons is because the fishery just doesn't have the abundance of life in it that it used to. You know, when I used to go there uh, in the 90s and the early 2000s a lot, uh, the, you know, sheer amount of bait balls, you know, panfish, shad, um, you know, just the amount of bait fish in that lake it was stacked and I just, you know, when I've been there in the last say 15 years, I just haven't seen the, the, you know, those giant schools, those giant balls like I used to. You used to pull into a cove, you used to pull um, on an island top or near it and you used to just, you know, your jaw would drop at just the amount of life, the amount of bait fish. Um, and and that's, that's, that's not like it used to be. It's got a lot to do with a few factors, which we're not going to get into. But smallmouth bass in that lake, at the moment, you would not have a problem, you know, catching bass up to four pounds pretty commonly as far as smallmouth go. And on the occasion, you can get those fives, sixes. On a rare occasion, you can get seven, eight, nine pound smallmouth bass still. Now, for the most part, keep in mind that a lot of these bigger smallmouth are getting caught on swim baits. So if you're going there and you wanna target those smallmouth, swim baits is where you wanna start. Other than that, keep in mind, tubes are great. And spinner baits, they can be on and off. Um, 
as well as drop shot being extremely effective. So if you're going to go to Lake Pardee, that's definitely on the list for some of the best smallmouth bass fishing in the state. It seems to me though that there are periods when those smallmouth really just, they, they, they're there and then uh, you can go back a couple weeks later and it feels like, you know, where'd they all go? Um, so they definitely tend to move a lot more than the largemouth, which are more consistent in where they're gonna hold, where they're gonna be. So keep that in mind. We're gonna move on to the next fishery. And the next fishery is gonna be Berryessa, Lake Berryessa, number four, located in the western part of NorCal. It's extremely different than some of those fisheries we just talked about. Same baits are gonna work, but you know, seems to be more of a consistently uh, stained water fishery. Not as clear as the others we talked about. It's going to, in my, most of my experiences, it seems like these smallmouth bass hold a bit deeper. Uh, other than of course springtime, it seems like they are relatively deeper in the water, um, you know, so, some of those other fisheries we talked about aren't as deep as Berryessa. They're also not as big. So deeper water, it's a bigger body of water. Sometimes being able to locate those smallmouth um, on the bigger bodies of water can be more difficult, at least if you know, you're going for numbers and you're going for size. Um, as far as numbers go, you know, I would say this is one of those places you can get on five to 15 smallmouth bass a day on a good day. Some of those smallmouth are gonna range, you know, really small, um, not much weight at all. Some of them are gonna range in that one to three pound class. Those are pretty common fish, one to three pound smallmouth there. And on occasion, you can catch four to seven pound smallmouth there. Now, prior to Lake Pardee holding the state record for smallmouth, Lake Berryessa had the lake record, I mean the state record for smallmouth bass. So definitely um, a great little fishery or, you know, it's a great fishery. It's got an, a, you know, it's got a pretty, pretty different, um, you know, instead of being up in that, you know, that elevation we talked about with the last few lakes, um, this this one's going to be lower in elevation. Sometimes I've noticed that um, as far as colors, some of the colors that really do well there are things with pink in it. I'm not sure what it is about pink and smallmouth. Keep that in the back of your mind. Uh, color does play a big you know, part in what you're gonna catch. If you throw a, a worm, for example, and you drop shot it, purple, pink, green, these colors are gonna attract different species of bass. You know, I think that pink, for some reason, really does a good job of attracting smallmouth. So as far as, you know, what else you want to use? It's going to be the same as what we talked about. Tubes, swim baits, sometimes a spinner bait. Uh, during the fall, spoons can be effective. But just keep in mind that um, this is going to be a bit different than the other, the other, uh, some of the other fisheries we mentioned. And as far as the last lake we're going to talk about. Um, I'm going to have to say Union Valley. Now, this is a lesser known fishery. So I had a couple fisheries on the top of my mind, you know, like, okay, as far as where the last fishery was going to be, um, I had a couple of them that were running through my mind, 
but I, I settled on Union Valley. It's lesser known. It gets little to no pressure the majority of the year, but I've gone there and caught 20 to 30 smallmouth bass consistently from spring to fall. And that's really hard to do. So if you're going and you just want to catch just sheer numbers, that fishery is pretty epic um, when it comes to the number game. Um, but the, the downside to that is the population is so thick in that fishery with smallmouth that they pretty much cap out around four pounds. So a four pound smallmouth, you know, that's, um, that's about as big as, you know, they get. Now there's going to be a couple in there that are going to be bigger, but, uh, I've, I've gotten close to that four pound threshold and that's it. That's all I, that's all I was able to do. That doesn't mean there aren't bigger fish in there, but what it does mean is that, um, you know, when, when you, when you think about it, they're the only bass in the fishery. The fishery is healthy and it has a lot of different, you know, it's got a lot of food in it, but it does feel like with the numbers that they have of the smallmouth bass in that fishery, that they're so competitive. You know, when you get out there and you throw a bait, you will notice whether, you know, you're throwing uh, a drop shot, a shaky head, that you're gonna get bite after bite. And a lot of times it won't even be the same fish. These fish are just, they're going at it. Um, when you throw top water, you could have two fish that blow up and are hooked momentarily on that top water. And, uh, you know, a variety, multiple blow ups on a single cast back to back to back. It's just, there's a lot of fish in there. And um, some of those fish, depending on which school you pull up on or which, you know, area you're fishing, you can be focusing on fish that are eight to 12 inches. You could be focusing on fish that are 14 to 18 inches. Um, but it seems like pulling up on schools of, you know, three, four pounders, there is just not something I've experienced, but definitely if you want to go out and catch just lots of smallmouth bass, more than I've been able to catch anywhere else, um, in the state, consistently that that would be the place to go and like I said same techniques as we talked about with the other lakes um, really clear water there I mean very clear um, elevation right around 6,000 feet and like I said there's a couple other fisheries in the state we could talk about where you're going to catch the occasional smallmouth. You might be able to go and catch five there in a day on a good day. Maybe even six. Um, but consistently these lakes are producing numbers as far as quality. So keep that in mind if you guys are going out and you're like I said west coast um, California, you're in those areas that are border states to California, this is going to pertain to you more than people obviously on the East Coast or Midwest, but keep that in mind guys, this video um, was really referring to smallmouth bass, we're not talking about northern strain largemouth, we're not talking about spotted bass, we're not talking about Florida strains, we're talking smallmouth bass, so I hope it helped you guys. Stay tuned for more videos. Thanks a lot.